In the last video, we, we have seen uh, how the architecture manifests the earlier set of design, where we have gone through the several aspects like, like uh, how the architecture implements the constraints, uh, how it dictates the organization structure, and how it enables the system quality attributes, and uh, the predicting the system quality uh, just by studying the architecture. Just by viewing that architecture, uh, one should be able to predict whether uh, the architecture is uh, uh, matching uh, the system quality uh, attributes as well as uh, how to manage the change. Uh, how to manage the change. This uh, software architecture demonstrates how to manage the change. Uh, either we need to change the one element that is a local pattern, we, ne we need to change the multiple elements that is a uh, non-local pattern and uh, we need to change the entire elements uh, that is called as a architectural pattern. And the last uh, thing is evolutionary prototyping. In the evolutionary pro proto uh, prototyping, uh, we have been using the same model to uh, design the new model. Uh, means uh, for the same model, we are adding uh, some features uh, or else we are deleting uh, some features, existing features and we are making it to a new model. This is the evolutionary prototyping and, and uh, uh, we will continue with uh, in this video that is architecture has a transferable reusable model uh, that is architecture can be transferable as well as reusable because uh, in the earlier in the life cycle reu is applied reuse is applied the greater the benefit that can be achieved when we are using the uh, things uh, the same thing many times uh, without constructing and without purchasing a new things that is a reusability that is uh, when uh, the, uh, the architecture is already be built uh, then we will reuse for some application uh, earlier it was developed for application X with a little modification or just changing the few things we can make it for uh, uh, usage of the Y application that is the greater it is a, it will be the greater benefit uh, it saves the time as well as the cost of uh, development and uh, management okay. and next uh, the software product lines share a common architecture a software product line or a family is a set of soft software intensive systems sharing a common managed set of features that satisfy the specific needs of a particular market segment or a mission uh, and that are developed from the common set of core assets in a prescribed way. Okay. They can share a common architecture. And next, uh, the systems can be built using the large externally developed elements. This is where our earlier software paradigms focused on programming as the primary activity with the progress measured in the lines of code. Okay. Uh, earlier uh, the progress of uh, the software activity it is measured in the lines of code. The meaning is when uh, the, the functionality of a software architecture is uh, performed using a set of 10 programs. The, in the development phase, in the development of uh, next model, the same uh, functionality will be achieved using a 5 set of programs. That is, progress is measured in lines of code. And architecture based development often focuses on composing or assembling the elements, how to compose the elements and how to arrange them, how to assemble the elements that are likely to have been developed separately, even independently from each other. Uh, when the elements are developed independently and separately, then we can uh, uh, use it for some other model. This is called as a that is a model prototyping that is uh, we copy the one model and uh, implementing the some other models. This is called as a model prototyping or architectural prototyping and the, our other name uh, we can call it for as a evolutionary prototyping. And less is more, it pays the stick to the vocabulary of design alternatives. Means when, you, when we, we wish to minimize the design complexity of the system, we are building that is advantage to this approach include a enhanced reuse, more regular 
simpler designs that are more easily understood and communicated, more capable analysis, shorter selection time and greater interoperability inter means uh, the once the model has been developed and uh, uh, in that model uh, if uh, the architecture architect had added enhance we use simpler designs simpler designs and uh, those kinds of design can uh, easily understood by all all group of people one who works on the uh, software architecture team uh, then it is easy to communicate and uh, we can make uh, 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 that is analysis more easily in a capable way and it takes a shorter selection time when uh, uh, the design patterns are easy to understand uh, in that case uh, uh, anybody can understand uh, uh, easily uh, in a within a shorter time the, then uh, easily we can uh, uh, make the selection time shorter which element to be chosen that is uh, uh, before implementing uh, that is one model into another model that is for evolutionary in the evolutionary prototyping we need to study the functionality of the model we are uh, we are prototyping there then in that case we need to check uh, we need to we need to check the behavior functionality uh, the different aspects over there when the design is simple and more easier then uh, uh, the selection time of the people will be uh, uh, it is a shorter and it can be more easily communicated communicated and uh, we can make uh, uh, that is uh, a greater interoperability means interoperability means how the uh, that is one model communicate with the other model how it share the information how it uh, uh, how the data flows from one model to the other model this is called as a interoperability i developed uh, three products x x y z x will be sharing the information to the y Y will be sharing to the Z and Z will be in turn sharing to the X. This is called as a interoperability. It means a change uh, that is a tra transition of data from one model to the other model. When we are ins when when we are inserting when we are uh, adding uh, some uh, element in, in the software architecture, uh, we need to take care of this interop interoperability aspect because all the model. Uh, they are uh, uh, sharing information mutually in order to perform their task, in order to achieve their goal. And next thing is an architecture permits template based development. Template based development means an architecture embodies design decisions about how elements interact uh, while uh, reflecting in each element's implementation. Uh, can be localized and written just once. Template can be used to capture in one place the entire element interaction mechanisms. Means uh, when we when we add uh, different models, we need to provide a template over there. That is, uh, that is how they can be localized. How they can be localized means how we need to change the single element and uh, return just once. So this is the usage of a template. Means we are providing the entire information about uh, the about the elements present in the model. How what is the functionality of the element? What is the configuration of the element? How it behaves? Uh, whether it is a modifiable or not? Like this, uh, in the form of template, we are providing all the information. That is this. Uh, this is another uh, important aspect about how architecture permits the. Uh, template based development and next is because uh, uh, this architecture is a prototyping uh, it is the evolutionary pro prototyping so uh, one that is uh, the x person has developed the uh, developed the architecture and in the future some z person want to use that the same prototyping then uh, these kinds of template based developments are uh, very useful in a evolutionary prototyping Next, an architecture can be basis for training. The architecture including the description of how elements interact to carry out the required behavior can serve the introduction to the system of new project members. Okay, uh, uh, that is how this template, uh, uh, that is template based development, uh, it is a uh, fundamental for, uh, that is fundamental for basis for training. 
because in the template only we are uh, providing all kinds of details like uh, the required behavior, uh, how they interact to carry out uh, their required behavior, what is their configuration like this, this architecture can be a basis for uh, training. So this is how the architecture as a transferable and a reusable model. So uh, we should be uh, take care of all these aspects that is uh, uh, to make uh, any uh, architecture as a transferable and a reusable model. It, it, it saves a time, it saves a cost as well as uh, it uh, supports uh, the concept uh, or the mechanism called evolutionary prototyping because uh, for all elements we are providing the template and uh, template and uh, uh, we are restricting uh, the restricting the vocabulary of design and alternatives okay. like this uh, many aspects are uh, contributing uh, how the architecture is a transfer uh, transferable and reusable model. The best analogy for this is uh, recycling of a plastic, that is uh, unused plastic items will be uh, molded and uh, they, uh, they specifically uh, uh, used for some other kind of application, that is uh, the first after uh, uh, recycling this. Uh, it, it, it uh, the uh, the plastic the recycled plastic uh, it 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 won't be in a original original state so uh, it it won't be in a original form so uh, it might be used in some other uh, uh, that uh, build, building or uh, production of uh, uh, particles uh, plastic particles or uh, plastic items this is how uh, the architecture uh, can be reused uh, by implementing all these aspects by the developing and architect team. So I, I will stop the video here and in the next video we will continue with the architectural structures and views.